In recent months, the Chicago police have solved a number of high-profile cases with the help of community support, including the shooting death of 15-year-old Hadaya Pendleton in Hyde Park, the shooting death of six-month-old Jania Watkins, who was killed while singing in the car with her father, and the shooting death of Leslie Freeman and her infant son, DeMonte, at Murray Park. However, far too many, in fact, the vast majority of homicides in Chicago go unsolved. In 2012, Chicago reported over 500 homicides, but had a clearance rate of only 25%, the lowest in over 20 years. This means 75% of the homicides in the murder capital went unsolved in 2012. Law enforcement officials have often complained about the lack of community help in solving crimes, citing the stop snitching movement that gained popularity a few years ago as a reason many crimes never get solved. The blame somehow gets shifted back to the very communities where the homicides occur, largely poor minority neighborhoods on the south and west sides. It's a known fact that former Area 5 Chicago Police Commander John Burge and his Midnight Crew tortured false confessions out of innocent black men on the south side for decades. What's not so widely known is that similar acts were taking place in Area 2 in Humboldt Park against mostly Hispanic men. As information came to light regarding how the death penalty was being administered in Illinois and the fact that several Burge cases resulted in death sentences, Former Governor George Ryan issued a moratorium on the death penalty in 2000 out of concern that innocent people were being put to death. Due in large part to the systemic corruption of Burge and many others like him, as well as those within the Chicago Police Department who silently condoned their actions, Cook County has been dubbed the wrongful conviction capital of the nation. Despite the lengthy history of documented police misconduct here in Cook County, which includes torture, forced confessions, threats, intimidation, conspiracy, and withholding evidence, law enforcement officials and the media seem to be at a loss to understand why anyone would honor the stop snitching code. Many simply associate it with a lack of morals and a pathology in the African American and Latino communities. This notion helps to criminalize entire communities that have already been victimized by an overabundance of crime and gross police misconduct. Ironically, in November 2012, a federal judge granted an $850,000 judgment against the city of Chicago in a case where an off-duty Chicago police officer viciously beat a female bartender while other officers sat around and did nothing to stop it. More significantly, the judge ruled that the beating occurred because of a police code of silence. This wasn't anything new to most people living in African American and Latino communities, but it was now coming from a federal judge. Immediately, Mayor Rahm Emanuel's office publicly condemned the verdict, then unsuccessfully sought to get the judgment removed from the public record. Why would the mayor take such a stance? After decades of systemic police misconduct, is it any wonder why many black and Latinos distrust the police? How can the law enforcement officials criticize community members for the stop snitching code while at the same time adhering to their own code of silence? Is there any difference between the two? Nitty gritty news. Hot one.